In the ancient days of 2011, when I was at a friend's house for a party of sorts and a group of us children were surfing YouTube at that time to keep ourselves occupied, out of the string of suggested videos was a title that popped out, Driving Me Crazy, where two young men dispute quite comically on who should drive to get the mail, and comically still, the location was a mere few meters away from their home. Forgetting their keys to the mail and being out of gas, one of them went home as if it were some terrible trek, and twist after twist, it ended with the whole scenario being an archived footage being used by people of the future to emphasize the struggles of the past. Alas, such a video would mark my descent into the rabbit hole that was Smosh. Smosh was like a weekly cartoon skit I would watch from time to time when I had the rare opportune moments where I was able to access some sort of computer or laptop. As in that time, I did not own a smartphone, nor were they popular from where I lived. I don't think smartphones existed at that time, or it's just where I'm from. There was something about just two guys making videos online and delivering something presentable. It broke the notion that I needed to become some sort of savant or gifted child in order to create works of art in video format. And so, because of watching these Smosh videos, I began making videos of my own using my phone, and they were mostly first-person shooters as I held the phone in front of me and in my other hand a stick shaped like a gun. From making videos with my siblings, neighbor, and at the site where my family's new house was being built, it was a fun little experience as a kid. I even once made a rifle out of red popsicle sticks. I was that desperate for better props. Unfortunately, however, those fun little clips are now lost, either due to me constantly losing my phone or making room for memory. It's one of those little things I regret. Now, the idea of just making something from home, no studio, no professional chicanery, and being able to share it with the world was something eye-opening. And when I was able to get my first ever netbook, basically a small laptop, I decided to make a YouTube video. I'm new on YouTube. And I'm a noob from these AE Arctic games, so um, this is just testing. And the Happy Wheels playthrough. What are we doing? Son, we are going to break glasses. But, but Dad, why? Because the level said so. It was terrible, and I realized I didn't have much to say so it was just two awkward videos devoid of any significant content. And apparently, I even recorded some mundane activities during my early junior high days. Hello, my name is Mr. Mark Mopon. So, this is our classroom. That is our classroom. Not really a form of art, but a little time capsule I can appreciate today. But this idea and action of just making stuff on your own, or in the case of Smosh, with friends, without any need for a professional background, allowed me to make and share things that I would have otherwise either kept to myself or never made at all. And so occasionally, especially during junior high school, I would make these teleporting videos with my friends and classmates because I had just learned how to pause and record simultaneously. The results were fun. <laughs> this was me and a couple of my friends. The premise was that this guy would jump and be teleported into the can, and when I would pick up and throw the can, he would teleport out. Table concussion. <laughs> and I also recorded other moments such as a music video. And overall, just stupid or everyday mundane stuff. 
<laughs> Unfortunately, because I had little storage, I would delete the videos from time to time in order to make room for more. I wasn't yet savvy with flash drives and phone to computer connectors at that time. I was still a kid, still learning the technology as it went on. So what I present to you here are just the few I archived. But extending from those experiences, Smosh inspired me to share what I created. Not just videos, but the things I truly wanted to make, such as animations, like the GIFs that I made during high school, stories, ideas, and most importantly, my art, paintings, illustrations, and comics. Because any time I got anxious of sharing my works or myself online, I would tend to remind myself that the people I looked up to were just two goofballs that made their own stuff and unapologetically shared them to the world, and so I would try to do so too. Until recently, I have been trying to make something out from my illustrations and comics, and although I'm neither rich nor famous, the events, people and experiences I joined, met and made respectively did not necessarily stem from my quality or prowess in my craft, but because I merely had the confidence to share them online and to others. Meaning, someone could find me through my works, relate to it, enjoy them, etc. Or whenever I introduce myself as an artist, I can just whip out my card, comics, or social media for anyone to see. It's that confidence, bravado, and faith in what I do that I realize any sense or semblance of success would come from. If there was any other thing I learned or realized from watching Smosh, it's that joy and happiness is only true when shared. That keeping things only to yourself, no matter how magnificent or objectively masterful your works may be, by not putting them out there for others to view and experience, then who are we expressing to? Who are we communicating to? Because art, be it film, animation, music, literature, or painting, are mediums of expression, which connects us as people. Now, I do not mean to say that if your work is not viewed by a million people, then you're a failure. No, if that was my point, I'd be a massive hypocrite. Nor would I have the goal to be sharing and making any of these. No, what I mean is that just have someone, at least uh, one other person to share your work or works to, or participate in your art, hobby, craft, or whatnot. Because while making things for yourself is indeed somewhat fulfilling, something I can attest to for sure, to have it include others, be it as a participative endeavor or a service or product, a shared expression of idea, passion or thought, elevates such a fulfillment to a level where you become connected. And because we are social beings, that connection, I believe, is important, and greatly provides a sense of something greater. One of the thoughts that reassure me is that even if Ian and Anthony from Smosh never became famous, never became a titan that would dominate YouTube for a time with all their multitudes of channels, camera crew, whatnot, in that alternate universe, Smosh would still most likely persist. Two people just making art and sharing them. Nothing more, nothing less. Because in the end, they have each other. And that's what I find endearing and inspiring as well. I've been watching Smosh since I was a kid. And looking back at it now, especially with this little reflection essay I made, they have influenced me greatly. And quite frankly, it's mostly positive, you know. Like all of the confidence, uh, not just the confidence, but the way I present myself, you know, or just the, the act of presenting myself to the wider audience, to the internet, to other people in my community, I find that it just stemmed from my experiences in watching Smosh. And uh, those were my thoughts about Smosh all this time. And amazingly, Ian Hecox and Anthony Padilla never seemed like people I desperately wanted to meet and become friends with. Like many other YouTubers I watched and consumed over the years would always one way or another trigger some parasocial tendencies. 
Yet that wasn't present with Smosh, so I guess that would be something I'm grateful for. Nonetheless, I just wanted to share my thoughts and put them out into the void of the internet. Until then, gratitudes and may your day be well.